Hi, I'm Sarah Mastin. I'm co-chair of the Global Initiative to End Wildlife Crimes Impact Technology Champions Network. I'm also the founder of Project 15 from Microsoft. When I started Project 15, I didn't know many in the NGO community, and I launched a project that was just me and a friend asking if we could help. But over the course of five years that I led Project 15, one thing became very clear, conservation tech has a scale issue. Whether it's systems for land management, whether it's making, you know, you name it. And then of course, anti-trafficking solutions. I don't know how many times I would read about innovative contests where some amazing idea would win grant funding. Only to have a year later, written article, you know, one of those, you know, where are they now articles written about them as they lacked the technical specialty to get to the next level. They couldn't gain access. They couldn't hire the right people. They wanted to make scalable data platforms. They wanted to integrate into other systems, you name it, but they just couldn't scale is what you'll see a lot of. And I invite you to go and look for those contests and then find, you know, that year later. There's one that I always find, you know, it's, it's very discouraging. The solution is amazing. It's about, um, you know, these fake turtle eggs in Costa Rica. And, you know, there was a NGO, I'm, I'm totally blanking on the name right now, I apologize. But if you look it up, you'll find so many articles about this project. It was amazing. And they, they won a bunch of contests and they were all over the news. And the first thing I thought, if you had made an just an ingenious way to catch poachers and you made a fake egg that you could track and then find the poachers. Amazing, right? But here's what I think happened, although it's unspoken. The granting cycle came up. They needed to get more funding. And so they went all over the news talking about how they had this great solution, but it's not just people like you and me and, and people who fund projects like this that read the news. It is the bad guys too. And so how do we build a world where these kinds of ideas are not falling victim to, you know, hey, we needed to get more more funding, so we had to talk about it on CNN in the United States, which is our, our national news. And, and that, to me, is a problem to solve. Sustainable business models are what is needed there, and we can no longer afford tin cupping for cloud-based solutions to save our natural world from the threats of environmental crime. So, so how do we change this? Well, this is, this is where John and myself got together and over many, many coffee talks, you know, we, we basically drink one more cup of coffee for the earth and we try to come up with some ideas. And we thought, wouldn't it be amazing to start to make a partner ecosystem that models a commercial partner ecosystem? And with End Wildlife Crime, putting it there to make a place where we could start to, you know, push out information, have webinars, you know, learn more about how this works and how different companies can come together to build solutions that are global, that are scalable and have less issues when it comes down to, you know, funding, sustainable funding. But the first step is to build that community. And so the impact tech champions is a place where we are starting to build a community and connect to other communities. Today, I'm super, super excited to announce that we are welcoming Earth Ranger as our first Impact Tech champion. Now, for most people in this room, Earth Ranger needs no introduction. But if you don't know who they are, I invite you to go out to their webpage and, and learn about them. They're probably one of the biggest connected solutions for wildlife monitoring, um, you know, leveraging data and AI to solve some of the world's biggest problems. And they're proactively going after fighting crime, you know, ending and mitigating human wildlife conflict in areas and, you know, fighting poaching, but also monitoring the health of animals. I know we talk a lot about, you know, the crime aspect or, you know, the, the, the end of the dark supply chain, which is, which is always a, a sad story but there's always something really good about, hey, you know, they were able to find out if that elephant or rhino was having had maybe the flu. Um, but they do all sorts of, of incredible, incredible solutions all over the world. Um, 
and I and I really do invite you to explore, you know, some of the work they're doing. And you're also going to notice they have a very rich partner ecosystem. You know, many device partners that make connected collars or smart cameras, you know, um, trail guard with, with Eric Dinnerstein and Resolve. And when you start to stitch together all the different companies that come together to make the solution at Earth Ranger, and you see that it, it's, it's not just out of a box, you can really see how these ecosystems of technology companies and what we specialized um, are really, really what is needed here. This is also a place where those folks that have ideas could come and see, here's a list of companies, learn a bit about them and, and go further. So this is incredibly exciting. And so we hope that you'll join us and, and learn about these companies. We'll be releasing new Impact Tech Champions uh, over the next few months and years and continue to grow this community. And, and they will be working alongside each other to really bring and evangelize what they do. And we will organize uh, some webinars and, and different virtual experiences. And hopefully, hopefully next time I'll be able to be in person uh, at, at the event with you all. But thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm really excited to kick this off. And, um, and John and I are, are thrilled uh, that, that Earth Ranger has, has joined the Impact Tech Champions at the Global Initiative to End Wildlife Crime. Thank you.